Hello, crypto world. Welcome to The Chart Historian. My name is Justin, and on this channel, I delve deep into crypto charts, exploring chart structures, fractals, and patterns. In this video, I'm going to talk about XRP. I want to talk about where we are in the big picture, how close we are to the next bull run. So stick around. This is going to be a fun video. What I'd like to start off first with is the big picture. So this is the zoomed out big picture of XRP. This is the repetitive macro structure that XRP has. Now, if you're following my channel, you know what this is. If you're new to my channel, you're probably saying, what? Let me explain. So there are three key parts to this structure that repeat over and over again. One is a bull run. It's what we're all here for. The next is a decline. This decline that I'm talking about comes after the bull run. After this decline, XRP goes into a new season, and that is a sideways range-bound time. Now, there are some things you need to know about this repetitive macro structure. First off, it plays out on different time frames. It can play out on a large scale like we see here, or it can play out on a small scale like we see here, a bull run decline and a sideways range-bound time. What I'd like to do is I would like to go to the very first time this sideways range-bound time takes place and show you how this structure repeats, and second of all, show you how it looks different but the same when it does. So here we are, folks, at the dawn of time. This is back in 2013. So XRP begins with a sideways range-bound time. Now, to show you that this structure is indeed repetitive, I broke it into three separate fractals. The first fractal starts with a move up. Now, I divide this fractal into two separate parts. This move up, and it actually moves down here, is part A. After it moves down, it typically goes sideways. Sometimes it arches down. That is part B. So that is fractal one. After fractal one comes fractal two. The basic idea of fractal two is that it has three waves. Wave A, wave B, and wave C. After fractal two, it goes into the final fractal of the range-bound sideways time, which is fractal three. The essence of fractal three is price moves up to a peak in part A. It then declines or crashes which is part B, it then recovers, does a small correction, and then goes into the bull run. Okay, so I laid out the sequence of events. I laid out the functions that this sideways range-bound time does. Now we're going to see how it looks the next time it repeats. So here is the next time it repeats. So here's the first time we just examined. There was the bull run. There was a decline, and now it repeats the sideways range-bound time again. Let's zoom into this and get a better look at it. Okay, so here we are once again in fractal one. Price moves up in part A, and it moves back down again, and then in part B, it goes flat. In fractal two, this played out, by the way, on a very small time frame. In fractal two, there's three waves, wave A. Look at wave B. It's just a candle up and a candle down. Now, if you went into a smaller time frame and examined this, it would look more like a wave, probably similar to one of these. But on a day candle, which is the closest I can do on trading view here, it just moves up and moves down. And finally, we have the third wave, wave C. So we see how these two fractals have repeated. Let's see how this one does. So price moves up in fractal three to a peak. Let's zoom in here so it's easier to see. Again, this played out on a very small time frame. So this is, so this is part A where it moves up to the peak. It then crashes or declines, which is part B. It then recovers, does a small correction, and then moves into the bull run. So once again, we see that the function's repeated. It looks different compared to this time when it first did it, but the basic ideas are there. So we need to talk about an important concept here. When a fractal repeats, the basic idea copies over, 
But the timing, the height, and the depth, those do not copy over. Those will be original to the new structure. So every single time this idea repeats, for instance, with fractal 1, it's going to look unique, even though it will do the same functions. Let's see if that is true. So we're going to go to the next sideways range bound time that takes place after this one. Okay, so the next time this takes place is over here. It plays out on a much larger scale. And in between is a bull run and a decline. So let's examine what takes place over here. Well, first off, we have fractal one. And what happens in fractal one? Price moves up in part A, it then moves down. Remember, I told you that B goes flat, but sometimes it arches down. Well, in this case, B arches down, and this is going to be a theme that is going to repeat. So in fractal two, we have the three waves, wave A, wave B, and wave C. In fractal three, we have the move up to a peak, which is part A. It then crashes or declines, which is part B. It then recovers, does a small correction, and then goes into the bull run. So once again, the functions repeated. It looks different. It looks unique every single time. But even with that uniqueness, if we examine this fractal 3 compared to this fractal 3, we're going to find similarities. Let's do that real quick. So in this fractal 3, price moves up and comes to a peak. But this peak, which is part A, has multiple peaks. It has three. It then crashes, which is part B. It recovers, does a small correction, and goes into the bull run we see that same idea repeat. It moves up to a peak with the three peaks. It then crashes or declines. It then recovers, does a small correction, and goes into the bull run. It looks different from the original one, but that DNA is copied down into the newer generations. But they don't all look exactly like this. The one in between over here, didn't really have the three peaks, but it did the same functions. Moves up to a peak, crashes, recovers, you can see that recovery if you zoom in a bit more, and then goes into the bull run. So everything we just examined was over here. There's this part. Let's zoom in to this structure and examine it. So this one takes place in early 2017. Now a lot of analysts mistakenly assume this is part of this larger bull run, but this is actually a complete full structure. It has a bull run, a decline, and a sideways range bound time. So in this one, let's zoom in a little closer. We have fractal one where price moves up, comes to a peak, and then moves back down in part A. And in part B, it doesn't go flat, it arches down. So we have another repetition of this idea where part B arches down. In fractal two, we have the three waves. We have wave A, which was very large. In wave B, this is where it gets actually kind of interesting. It is such an anemic wave, it's actually easier denoted or defined by the moves down after each wave. So you have the wave right here, part B. It barely got any airtime, but it is a wave. It's a small wave. It's a sickly wave, but it is a wave. And then we have the C wave, which terminates this fractal two. And in the final fractal, fractal three, price moves up to a peak. It then declines or crashes. It recovers, does a small correction, and then it goes into the bull run. So we can see that even though this is a small iteration of the macro structure, it is a complete full structure. It's not part of this bull run. So what happens in this bull run? We have the bull run, we have the decline, and we have the sideways range bound time with part A where price moves up, moves back down, and part B where it goes flat. In fractal two, we have the three waves, wave A, wave B, and wave C. And in fractal three, price moves up to a peak, which is part A, it moves down or crashes, declines, which is part B, it then recovers, does a smaller correction. This was actually quite large for a smaller correction, but it was part of the smaller correction. After this correction, it goes into a bull run, which is then followed by a decline. And we are currently almost done this sideways range bound time. How do we know that? Well, it moves up in part A and moves back down. Then it goes flat in part B. In fractal two, we have the three waves, wave A, wave B, and wave C. Look how tall wave C was. This was the ruling from the SEC versus Ripple. It just completely distorted this C wave, but it was a C wave. 
when this took place, I knew that this was not a bull run, even though analysts were saying it was a bull run or is likely to be a bull run or could be a bull run. I knew 100% that it wasn't. Now, I am not always so good at <laughs> pinpointing things. This next fractal gave me plenty of opportunities to eat humble pie as I have attempted to guess what it is doing. As it's played out, it's become clear what it's doing. This is part A. We even have several peaks, like in the original one. So this is a harken back to the granddaddy of Fractal 3s. It then declines or crashes, which is part B. It has recovered, and it is now doing that small correction. So we know that we are in the tail end of this sideways range-bound time. It has completed all these other parts. Now, how much longer this small correction goes is unknown. However, what we can do is we can compare to previous third range bound fractals and maybe get an idea of what it's doing and what could potentially still be missing on this smaller correction. Now, you need to be aware that when we do this, and this is what gets me into trouble, it's going to be original every single time. As you saw, we went through every single third range bound fractal. None of them looked identical. So understand that even when comparing, it's gonna be original. And this is where it's gotten me into trouble. I thought when we were here, I was comparing to this one and I was like, <laughs> man, this looks so close. This is the point where it starts going up. Nope, what did it do? <laughs> it went down. So that's the pitfall of comparing to the past structures. We're actually just looking for functions. But having said that, let's go ahead and compare this one over here, which takes place in 2016 and the beginning of 2017. Let's zoom in on this. So if we were to copy and paste this structure, which began in September 2016 and ended in March 2017, if we were to copy this and we'd have to adjust it for today's timing, height, and depth, it would look something like this. Now, there's differences, but there's similarities. So in the chart, it has this flat part. We see that in the fractal. It then does this first wave, second wave. It declines down to part B. This is where it begins to take some liberty and do something different. In the fractal, this was more of a bottoming structure where on today's chart, it really moves up high, but it does the same idea. It's a bounce, same with this on the fractal. After that, it moves back up in the fractal and does this little consolidation before moving into the bull run. Well, on today's chart, it's playing out similar, but on a larger scale. Let's zoom in on this structure right here and compare it just to this part of the fractal. So if we're just to focus on that very tail end part, we can see that it is doing something similar. So we have the move up, the decline, and then essentially a bounce. Now, maybe it will go lower, I don't know. Eventually, if it is to continue following something similar to this, we would start hopefully soon working on the move up. Now it's going to start slow, maybe kind of waddle its way up. And then it is my belief once we get above this high here that I believe XRP is more likely to really come to life. Of course, we'll have to see how that materializes and plays out. It could be different, but it's my hunch that once it gets above here, it's going to start coming to life. Now, there's another fractal that is this third range bound fractal. Now, parts of it are similar. So if we were to copy this move up, starting from the decline, which is part B, and then doing the small correction, the recovery, all that, if we were to copy this and paste it over here, it would look something like this. So there is some differences, but there are some similarities too, I'll show you. So mainly this part right here, it moves up, pulls back, moves up again to another peak, pulls back. Both the fractal and the chart do this, moves up to a peak, then declines. It's over here where it begins to deviate. Now, we could potentially be doing something like this, and this is just merely a longer kind of exaggerated move down than what this fractal originally called for. 
this keeps all this in place. I like that. It does move up. On today's chart, it moves up quite drastically. It pulls back. This pulls back after this move up on the fractal. Now, I don't know if this is the right layout. It could be something more like this. I don't know. But what I do know is that this part has played out. We'll have to see how this continues to evolve. If I have this laid out correctly, we're close, folks. So here's both those fractals now on the chart. The blue one, which is the 2016-17 one, in this part, to me, seems a closer match. So there you have it. It is my belief that we are really just working on the, the final part of this smaller correction. Really, any day we could start seeing this move up. XRP will start coming to life. So, folks, that's how I see it. This is where I believe we are in the path to the bull run, we are, we're really at the threshold. This is the threshold. And as you can see, I went through the entire XRP chart showing you every single sideways range bound time. I showed you the similarities, the differences. We have seen in this video, this sideways range bound time repeat and play out many times. We know we're in the final stages of it. So Hold on to your hat, folks. I know this is a trying time. Look how long this third range bound fractal has taken compared to these other two fractals. This one is just, it's, it's really trying XRP holders. But consider this the rite of passage to get to the bull run. And folks, I believe this bull run has potential to be great. Here is a video you can watch on the XRP dominance chart where I make the case for a bull run that is not one or two dollars going to this price or this price over here. I believe we're looking at new all-time highs this bull run. Can't say that for sure, but to me, the evidence is there for that. Well, I hope this video was helpful. If you did find it helpful, it'd be much appreciated if you hit that thumbs up button. This is not financial advice. I'm not a financial advisor. But if you did enjoy this video and you're not yet a subscriber, I recommend hitting that subscribe button. I'll continue to follow up on this chart as it continues to develop. Bull run is near, folks. But just remember, in the big picture, you can go back and watch some of my other videos. I have a playlist called The Coming Economic Hurricane. In there, I make the case that we are very near some challenging economic times. I believe we will experience a crypto bull run before that takes place. But we don't have much time before that begins, in, in my belief. I also have a Patreon page where I deep dive into the XRP bull run structure. It's a series of five videos. In there, I go through each corrective structure that takes place during the bull run. I believe it's worth your while to get familiar with the bull run structure. It's a repetitive structure. I also have a Discord that's connected to my Patreon page and that's the main thing for the, it's the discord in there we discuss xrp casper a lot of different cryptos you're welcome to join it's a five dollar a month subscription i'll put a link to my patreon in the description of this video i'm so glad you caught this video i hope you catch my next one have a great day and bye for now